Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two, the uh, user manual for the rest of your life. Art and I are with the Dr. Liv, uh, Dr. Liz Lister, who is going to help us live happily for the rest of our lives. I'm yes. longer. <laughs> Happy and healthy. So I have a question today. Um, it, it seems as if um, I've heard a rash of, uh, of people in our age group. Uh, my wife would tell me that she just spoke to somebody. They have a urinary tract infection. And then this other person, mainly women, it seems, but also some men uh, are, I'm hearing of it increasingly. Is that a, an age-related thing? Uh, how common is that? It, uh, it's very common and it does increase with age. The hmm. risk for urinary tract infections does increase with age and more so in women than in men for a variety of very interesting reasons. And they are? Why? Yeah. Well, tell, for, why. I'll tell you what, I'll start with saying why they are less common in men. So when we compare the anatomy of the bladder and the urethra, the urethra is the little tube from the bladder to the outside. And in women, it's really short. It's uh. maybe two inches long. And in men, it is longer. It travels through the whole penis from the bladder all the way out. And so it's always, in the vast majority of cases, it's going to be longer. And this is protective. Another feature of the anatomical differences is that in women, the opening from the bladder is right in front of the opening from the vagina, which is right in front of the opening for the rectum. And so this area of the body generally has a greater presence of organisms, bacteria, other, other organisms from the uh, intestinal tract that normally live there. So there's a greater presence. So the distance to travel into the bladder is much shorter and it's just much easier access for those organisms that can cause infection to get into a woman's bladder than it is to get into the man's oh, body. Wow. When you, when you described the, the difference in length, my first thought was, well, gee, I was thinking of the flow going out. Gee, a shorter That's right. uh, urethra That's right. would be uh, helpful. But no, it's the it's the going the other way. Little bad guys getting in. Yes, exactly. Oh, so the that's lower odds, lower chance of bacteria mm. getting into the bladder in a man. And to your point, the flow of urine outwards is protective. Mm. That oh. that does help. Okay, well, that's another reason an that they're it less common. Clean out the tube. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And perhaps, by also, the way, and perhaps for some of us, uh, we uh, go more frequently than our female counterparts as we get older. So well, that, even more protection. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know about that. A lot of women report urinating really often. You know, nowadays we all try to stay hydrated uh, and that can, that can also contribute to that. One more aspect that uh, ha can happen, it probably can happen in men as well, but I know for a fact in women, is that some women who may report that they're more prone to bladder infections they might actually have a genetic variation in those lining cells that line the urethra, that they're more susceptible to infection from the bacteria that live in the area. Wow, genetic? So that there, there are genetic leanings or tendencies as well. Uh, so uh, can, we, we can, all hear that people don't generally die from this stuff. They they get some kind of treatment, they get some medication. So there are treatments. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. And there That's are right. all but but on the other side, are there are there preventatives? Are there things you can do uh, to help prevent getting them in the first place? Yes. yes, absolutely. So I want to say one more feature in women's bodies as we get older that also can contribute to bladder infections. And that is the loss of estrogen can make the tissues thinner. So we're talking about the lining of the vagina, which is the same as the base of the bladder. Ah. And that can cause women to be more susceptible as well to bladder infections. So that's my first answer to the question you just asked. How can women prevent bladder infections? Number one, they can use some, just a micro dosing of vaginal estrogen if they need it. That's number one. Number two is 
not waiting to go and void, which is the medical term for going to go pee. Yeah. All right. So it's very important not to hold on to the urine. Another condition that sometimes women experience is relaxation of the pelvic organs. Sometimes that can cause retention. So if bladder stay, if urine stays in the bladder too long, that also increases the risk of infection. So yeah. that's something that women and men can do is when you feel the need, when you feel the urge to urinate, go and urinate. Do not let the urine sit there longer than it needs to. Yeah. Cranberry, cranberry is an interesting one. A lot of people know about that. It acidifies the urine. Cranberry juice, let me tell you one thing that does not work, and that is the usual sweet cranberry juice. All Why those not? kinds of products. Because of the sugar out does the it out it increases the harm. Uh, Increasing the sugar in the urine is another way to contribute to bladder infections. Oh. And so the cranberry, yeah, the cranberry effect is just not that significant. There's unsweetened cranberry juice. It is not easy to drink. Yep. But that's what we're talking about. So what a lot of my patients use now are tablets. If they want to do, if, if they are having somewhat frequent bladder infections, they want to do something preventive, there are cranberry tablets that can be used as well. Yeah. Yeah, because cranberry, mm. I love cranberry sauce. And it's made with right. sugar. Mm. It's made right? with a lot of sugar. <laughs> and and um, yeah. I recent had, recently had a, a chocolate chip cookie that had cranberries in it. They were terrific. Ooh, but, wow. but again, <laughs> yeah. sugar in the cookie. Wait, 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 wait. But you glossed over cranberry sauce. Okay. And we have this thing where we, uh, for, for Thanksgiving, we have about 10 cans because everybody wants the end. You know, that has a... They, so if somebody could just come up with no, that has nothing to do with the urinary tract and infections, but I'm just unfortunately, saying, unfortunately, it does not. And no. fortunately, there's just I have made a love. That's my thing at Thanksgiving. That's always besides desserts. My contribution is the cranberry sauce. Mm. Way too much sugar. Same with the juice. There is yeah. unsweetened cranberry juice. Mm. It's not that delicious. But yeah. mostly if we're paying attention, we're able to keep basic hygiene in the area. Again, we've discussed in other segments that in uncircumcised men, they need to be more careful. If there's any kind of stricture yeah. of the foreskin, that is going to increase the possibility. It's going to increase the harboring of those organisms, right. and it can increase the mm. risk of urinary retention. Also, benign prostate enlargement. Mm. If it's backing up the urine flow, that can increase a man's risk for oh, a bladder infection. Mm -hmm. So now, all of these... It's important to address uh, uh, the prostate is a whole other uh, issue really in right. and of yes. itself but yes. as it regards uh urinary tract it's it's the an important part right i mean it, you've got to worry about your prostate right. at the same time mm. that's right that's exactly yeah. right also in some scenarios for example in uh, nursing care facilities where patients are not as mobile, they might be more bedridden. Uh, also, they may have a weakened immune system. There may, and there's illnesses in which people need to use catheters. Uh, if people are having surgery and they're having a urine catheter placed, oh, uh, yeah. always after surgery, we try to get those catheters out as soon as possible because that also kind of helps speed up that highway from the outside organisms where they're hanging out to into the bladder. Yeah. So in, in that type of scenario, we try to get the catheter out as quickly as possible. But there are some illnesses where people have to catheterize and they have to be careful. Some people can be on what we call prophylactic use of an antibiotic, where they take a low dose of a medicine every day, yeah. higher dose to treat a bladder infection. And the tip that I want to leave our listeners with is to sometimes if you feel like something is wrong in that area and you're feeling pressure, of course, there's other symptoms of a more severe infection. There can, there can be fever, there, but it's usually pain with urination. It, that's usually an early sign before it causes worse problems higher up in the urinary tract up to the ureters and the kidneys. But before it gets to that point, uh, usually people have symptoms, tell their doctor and they can get treated. 
if right. it's not so straightforward, it's also possible, and I order this a lot, is a urine culture. The way most doctors order these tests is a urinalysis, and it only gets sent for a culture if the urinalysis shows something going on. Ah. A lot of times, if I have somebody who has had lingering symptoms, I will send her for the culture. So yeah. if you're on any kind of antibiotic, it'll make the urinalysis clear. But it doesn't mean that the infection is completely cleared up. It has to be at least a couple of weeks with off of any antibiotic and then just the culture. And I have to do a lot of capital letters on my lab order uh, instructions to the lab so that they don't do what we call a reflex test. They do a urinalysis and then if it shows something then it triggers the reflex to do the culture. A lot of times I want that culture done if yeah. my patient is having symptoms. Hmm. Important information, as always. Thank you. You're very welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.